Rated T for Teen. A day at the races for the Strange Brigade. Hello. You are joining the Strange Brigade as they drop into a scene from the campaign, which we're using for our E3 demo this year. So you can see a team of four players here working together to explore the unknown. The campaign's one to four player. It's got some competitive elements in it as well, as you'll see as we go through the, the playthrough here. Oh, opening up a chest, getting some treasure. So you collect gold throughout the game, which you can use to unlock weapons later on. Um, so you can increase the size of your arsenal of weapons that are available to you. Another bloody jungle trek. And in this heat... There's a cat minding its own business. <laughs> Yeah, there's layers of collectibles in each level, isn't there, Steve? Yeah, there's a bunch. There's like uh, canopic jars and lots of things that reward the player for detailed observation of the environment. Is there no problem the brigade can't solve? So as you yeah. explore through the environment, there's a few simple sort of action-y puzzles to solve. Ghastly ghouls blocking the bridge. But can they hold it against the strange brigade? Yeah, and this beam that's been used to activate the crystal that's unlocked the route here can be turned on the enemies and indeed your teammates if you're feeling that way inclined. You can see the players kind of tag teaming here, so the guy firing the beam has set them on fire, which softens them up for a bit of damage, isn't that? Yeah, right? yeah. The low road, eh? Let's hope the old grey matter is up to it. You can see that we've split into two groups here. One group's taken the high path, the other group's taken the low path. One of them's a little bit more puzzly, one of them's a bit more fighty. Please, of glory! I can think of a few good uses for these razor-sharp rotaries. The detail in the levels has like multiple paths as you go through. It rewards lots of replayability in the levels to find everything. Nelson's ghost! Aye. What a convincing scream. Steve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's terrifying. It's, I, I have seen it like several hundred times and yet, you know, it fits well. still gets me. Oh, the tone, the enemies all fits the sort of 1930s serial adventure, rompy adventure that the characters are on. The whole setting and theme of the game is based on these 1930s, 40s adventure serial matinee movies. So it's all uh, deliberately kind of tongue in cheek and hokey. It's got a lot of sort of charm and uh, fun. The emphasis is very much on not taking itself too seriously. Well, they're not called the Subtle Brigade, I suppose. It's not subtle, he's right. Spiky log trap, there we go, highlighting that lack of subtlety. Uh, one of the hidden puzzles here, so you've had to go off the beaten track a little bit to find this one. There's loads of different puzzle doors like this throughout the, throughout the levels. Behind it, you'll find a relic, and by collecting sets of those relics, you can unlock more amulet powers. As we, as we continue on, you'll start to see those amulet powers coming into play a little bit more. Cracked it. So we're about to see here the power gems being applied to the weapons. So each weapon has got a different number of slots and you can use um, the, like, damage upgrades but also considerably different effects like ricocheting bullets or ice bullets or fire bullets. And as you unlock more and more powerful weapons they come with more slots available. The big gun bonanza box! Here's a, uh, the first of the prototype weapons, the exploding crossbow which I think Gracie is going to demonstrate for us now. Super. Yikes. <laughs> you see a couple of amulet attacks here. So there was a, a six shooter with powerful bullets. And there's Langus, the Wrath of Ra, a kind of radial explosive fire wave. So solving one of the many puzzles in the game here as well. So this is kind of operating cooperatively, one person standing on a footplate to open the door, the other having to thread their way across a, a maze following the, the clues that are laid out in the room. So the more complicated puzzles are off the beaten track, aren't they? So if you want to play the game as a straight co-op shooter, you can do. Yeah. If you want to explore the environments and find unlockables, 
give you cool new treasures. Uh, you can play that way as well. Uh, what we're hoping to see is um, people repeatedly playing these levels and discovering whole new areas that they weren't that they missed the first time around. And here's a nexus. So this is one of the th systems that where you're undermining Sateki's grasp over the over the environment by smashing these crystals. Acrobatic assailants to arms, strange brigade. Introducing the ghouls, nasty, fast moving, teleporting, horrible. Uh, there's Frank with a the flamethrower there, that's particularly brutal. I say, they're coming out the ruddy walls now. Gracie's using the chain electricity attack, thing. followed up by a grenade in the face. Good combo. So you can see the, the sort of pace of the game comes into its own in these great big fights where you've got. Amulet powers triggering, you've got prototype weapons doing loads of damage, you've got environmental traps, spinning blades, you've got uh, grenades that players can throw. Because of the way that you charge up your amulets by sort of absorbing the souls from the enemies, the more of them there are, the, the faster the rate of the combat becomes and so the intensity really ramps up quickly. It means there's a bit of competition there for souls as well. Yeah. And that's it, a very short section of one of our levels. Thanks very much for watching. Strange Brigade is available August 28th on Xbox One, PS4 and PC. What massive miscreation is this monstrosity? Darwin spectacles! How will our heroes get out of this one? Tune in next week to find out in another gripping installment of... The Strange Brigade!